Alien forces consisting of four infantry divisions and 20 armored units had surrounded the city of Mugos along with Earth's 2nd Armored Division. The aliens were resisting the advance of Earth's 131st Infantry Division from the Western Front, spanning from a forested region northeast of Mugo City to the outskirts of elevated terrain west of it. Alien defenses were bolstered by robust plasma cannon installations, artillery emplacements, and anti-aircraft defenses concentrated in the forested region southeast of Mugo City. The 131st Infantry Division, supported by Earth's 2nd Armor Division and assault gun units, pushed eastward from the western perimeter towards Mugo City. However, progress was hindered by increasing alien resistance, despite multiple attempted offensives. I was deployed via rail transport alongside the 8th Armor Regiment of Earth's 2nd Armor Division to reinforce the 131st Infantry Division for the upcoming assault on Mugo City. Our company comprised 17 advanced battle tanks, one recovery vehicle, and 10 transport vehicles for logistics. Our company received an urgent notification. Commander of the 5th Grenadier Regiment delivered critical combat instructions to me at his headquarters simultaneously. My mission was to prepare for an assault near Muggo City, advancing towards Outpost 2, leading a team of 30 specialized assault volunteers. Simultaneously, a direct assault was launched by our frontline units. We expected artillery support from units positioned in the forested regions northeast and southeast of Muggo City. I swiftly proceeded to the command hub of the Earth's 2nd Armor Division and received a terrain briefing from Commander. The terrain flanking the railway was dense swampland on either side. We devised a plan to initiate our offensive by targeting the elevated woodland area located one kilometer east of Muggo City. Following the elimination of enemy plasma defenses, I would lead the armor units and support battalion through the wooded terrain towards enemy position to apply more pressure on them. Both commander and the assault gun commander concurred with our strategic approach. Following the arrival of General Major at the command headquarters, a definitive strategy was concluded. My directive was to initiate the assault on Outpost 2 along the Maglev tracks, then proceed towards enemy positions before advancing on further to reconnaissance. Meanwhile, the support battalion, supported by assault gun units, would secure the elevated positions and woodland on the right flank. On the left, the volunteer battalion would reinforce the tank's company's assault with seven assault gun units, securing the left flank of the operation. Considering the terrain conditions, I opted to gather at the crossroads on the southeast perimeter of Outpost 2, aiming to launch an eastern assault to penetrate the fortified alien positions. Subsequently, our plan was to pivot northward, reaching the Maglev Road in the only clear passage through the swampy terrain, before engaging the alien defenses west of Outpost 2, along the right side of the Maglev Line. At noon, I embarked with 16 medium battle tanks and 30 specialized assault volunteers, swiftly breaching the enemy front amidst intense artillery and mortar barrage, successfully reaching the Maglev line with our entire armored unit. Surviving alien infantry units retreated towards the nearby woodland upon our advance. However, five of our tanks became immobilized in the swamp during our progression to the right of the Maglev line. These units were tasked with securing the right flank, aiming their weapons towards the woodland areas, as our infantry had yet to arrive in that sector. Meanwhile, the remaining tanks initiated an assault on the heavily fortified alien positions, defended by 10 to 12 plasma installations, located 600 meters west of Maglev Station. Unfortunately, three of our tanks were rendered inoperable due to hostile fire. Regrettably, our anticipated artillery support was unavailable as the designated observer failed to establish radio communication. Nevertheless, we successfully neutralized all enemy emplacements, subsequently eliminating the remaining alien infantry with the assistance of our volunteer assault teams. Due to severe snowstorms and limited visibility, I maintained position atop the elevated terrain for approximately 45 minutes. I initiated another offensive towards Maglev Station, aiming to maneuver around the town from the right flank. However, encountering additional obstacles with three tanks immobilized in the swamp, 
I redirected our advance by crossing the line north of Maglev Station and initiated an assault on the town from the left flank. Following a brief firefight, enemy resistance subsided. We ignited the western outskirts of the town with our artillery barrage. Subsequently, around a thousand alien infantry troops evacuated the town, dispersing towards the north and east. We conducted a reconnaissance mission towards enemy positions, resulting in the destruction of five plasma installations and the immobilization of two tanks in the swampy terrain. Infantry units from the Bone Battalion reached our front line, requesting artillery support to eliminate remaining hostiles within the town. The town was successfully occupied and cleared of hostiles, encountering minimal opposition. I received orders via radio instructing our company to maintain control over Maglev Station, securing the northern, eastern, and southeastern sectors. I subsequently directed the mobile tanks to establish defensive perimeters to the north and east, while assigning the immobilized units on the right of the railway to fortify the southern sector. As night fell, I arranged for the recovery of the immobilized tanks. Our forces seized two abandoned anti-aircraft cannons, four plasma rifles, alongside various mortars, anti-tank weaponry, and alien transport vehicles within the town. Based on observation of flares, it appeared that the infantry located south of the railway was positioned considerably to the west. A sense of calm descended upon the battlefield. At this juncture, my assessment of the situation was as follows. Our objective, Maglev Station, had been successfully secured per the regimental commander's instructions conveyed in the latest radio communication. Currently, I have six operational tanks at my disposal, with an additional three to four expected to be recovered from the swamps in the coming hours. Unfortunately, due to the swampy conditions, logistical supply via road for fuel and ammunition is impractical. Meanwhile, our infantry forces have secured the elevated terrain to my left and successfully occupied Maglev Station. Flares observed to my right indicate the distant position of our infantry forces. My reconnaissance mission towards enemy positions revealed that advancing further towards Maglev Line in that direction is nearly unfeasible due to impassable swamp conditions, critical fuel shortages, and intensifying alien resistance, suggesting anticipation of our approach. Additionally, the terrain to the east is entirely unsuitable for passage, similarly south of the railway line extending to the woodland perimeter. Fortunately, there seems to be a lack of significant alien anti-tank defenses established south and east following the elimination of their three-line plasma installation, equipped with 16 cannons, west of Maglev Station. Surprisingly, None of our immobilized tanks came under fire despite being within range of enemy weaponry. Given the challenging terrain conditions, it's unlikely that we can tow the plasma cannons to blockade the Maglev line embankment overnight. Furthermore, based on our reconnaissance towards enemy lines, we anticipate minimal enemy presence in that vicinity, following their retreat from this part of the front and our break of the Muggo city siege.